welcome to the Humbug V2, a remastered version of the most popular base on my channel. Now with more storage space, improved bunker mechanism, a longer door path with a higher raid cost, and much much more. Let me show you around. From the outside of the base, you'll see that it retains the same classic design, but now the oil refinery is located outside, behind this double door, as it doesn't get used much, I moved out here to make more room for loot inside. And on this side we have space to keep some horses, or you can swap this out for a bedroom if you prefer, which I'll show in the tutorial. Now on this side you'll see that I moved the entrance down to the ground floor, the cheeky shotgun trap above. We've also got an airlock here so you can defend the entrance, and the window gives you a bit more visibility around the front of the base. If any door campers manage to get this far in, you've also got a flame turret under the jump up. And here you can access your vending machine for selling stuff. The second floor is far more spacious than before, now with an extra loot room around the back, and any extra deployables you may need. Behind this vending machine, we have a large battery, and as you can see the terminals can be accessed through the vending machine, which is pretty cool. Personally, I just use it to power furnaces and lights, but you can add turrets if you prefer. To replace where the oil refinery was originally, we have a pixel gap bunker, great for spreading your loot around the base. But don't worry, this uses the same build out as the core bunker, so it doesn't take any extra effort to build. And here we have space for a couple beds for a quick respawn. Enter the core through this triangle. One of the main improvements of the original is that now the bunker seals as a triangle instead of a square, meaning it's much cheaper to seal. And in this version, you can also seal off the shooting floor, which means the roof is no longer a structural part of the base which was a weak point of the original. So when you destroy this door frame, both the shooting floor and core bunker will open. I haven't changed the core too much from the original, as it worked pretty well. Just managed to squeeze a lot more box space down here. And just as before, the TC is located behind this vending machine, right in the center of the base, where it's most protected. Next we're going to make our way up to the shooting floor. In the original, the entrance to it was in the center of the base, but moving it to the side, like on this one, gives you better mobility from the core. As you can see, the shooting floor offers the same peaks as the original base. They give you fantastic fireway angles. It's the same on all three sides. You can shoot from the middle, or use the ramps to elevate yourself. The barricades are there to give you a bit more cover, but you can remove them if you think they get in the way. The shotgun traps will prevent anyone from jumping up and camping it. And before we start the build, make sure to check out today's sponsor, Rust Clash. They're a case opening website with loads of great game modes, including Plinko, Roulette, and PvP Battles. They've just introduced the brand new Rust Clash Pass, where for a whole month you can double your rewards and earn extra deposit bonuses. On top of that, they give away $25,000 every single week. Just keep a lookout for these messages in chat. Deposit and withdraw using skins, cash, or crypto, and claim your 5% bonus every 24 hours with my code CROWRUST. This also unlocks rate back and free cases the more you play. Check them out now using my link below, but remember, 18s and above only. Commence the build by placing down a square foundation, followed by a triangle one. Surround the foundations with walls and put a double door on this side. To make sure you can access the TC from behind the vending machine, it must be placed correctly, so pay close attention to the next part. Make sure it's as far right as it can go, and about this distance from the front of the triangle. This doesn't need to be 100% accurate, but if you want to, you can upgrade the triangle before placing the TC, and check that it's two dots away from the front of the triangle. I highly suggest practicing this on a build server before trying it for real. Next we're going to expand the starter. This can be done gradually in steps, but I'll leave that up to you. After placing the foundations, surround it with balls, and then put a double door here. Then build these three ceilings first, but this triangle in the airlock must not be upgraded past wood, so we can soft side it later for the bunker entrance. After that, add a bunch of wall frames and doors in these slots. But personally, I wouldn't put a door in this slot as it can get quite annoying. Just put it in if you go online, or wait till you get garage doors. Before we start building the bunker, you need to add these parts first. After putting down the two triangle foundations, put down two walls. Then build floors at half height. This will be where our pixel gap bunker goes. When you've done that, seal them off with another full wall. Next, put a triangle foundation here with a wall to the left, but make sure not to put a door frame or a ceiling on it. After that, we can build the bunker. Start by placing two square foundations, 
and to the left or the right, built up by 9 triangles. It doesn't matter if you have to raise or lower them. On the last triangle, place a square. This is how the build out should look from above. Now go ahead and remove all the twig apart from the final square that we placed. Next we're going to build back towards the base with 5 squares, but this final square must attach to the one that you're standing on. To do this, move your mouse down whilst placing it. Confirm that the square is attached correctly by looking at the wave of blue pixels that should float down. If you're on console, this might be difficult to see, so as long as you look down whilst you place the square, you should be fine. After upgrading it, you can remove these 4 twig squares. Then from this one, we're going to do the same 9 triangle build out and put a square on the end. If you're new to this bunker tech and wondering why on earth we're doing this, this is to create a pixel gap in the base so the bunkers can work. After you complete the same build out again, remove all these twig pieces and you'll be left with this square. Now we're back towards the base with four squares. But again, this final one needs to be attached to the one that you're standing on. So use the same technique as before to confirm it's placed correctly, but don't upgrade this foundation. Instead we're going to put a wall here and a ceiling on top of it, making sure it attaches to the wall in front of you. Now you can remove all these twig foundations and build a triangle here with a temporary roof to jump up to the next floor. Now on top of the base, confirm that this square is at 22% stability. If it's not, then you'll have to repeat all these steps that we just did all over again. Next we're going to add a new entrance above this wood triangle. So add walls, a triangle frame on top and then a jump up. Now drop down inside of the base and place a triangle, making sure it attaches to this square in front of you. To do that, move your mouse down again. Confirm that it's attached correctly by checking the stability. It should be at 8%. If you're happy with that, go ahead and upgrade it to stone. Now I'm going to remove this door to give myself a bit more room and soft side out this triangle, which can be done in under a minute with just a couple of machetes. Next, move yourself so you look directly into this corner and place a triangle frame. The stability of this should be at 92%. There's not much point in upgrading it past wood, as its only job is to stop you from placing the bunker in the wrong slot. Now you can see you should be able to place a triangle within the frame, but there won't be enough stability until you place this door frame here. Now, every time you place this bunker, make sure that the stability isn't above 11% before you upgrade it. As you can see, removing the twig door frame opens the bunker. Next, we're going to put a shelf in here for another loot room. And I'll explain why we use a single door frame rather than a double door one to hold up the bunker. If you use a double door frame, it can be seen from outside the base, which can be shot out easily. Now before we move on to the next step, make sure to place the single door frame. And for now you can use a furnace to jump up to the next floor. Let's now place walls in these locations. You might have to look down to place them. And put a double door frame here. Next we need to make sure that the ceiling attaches to the wall in front of you. So place it like so and make sure that the stability is at 19%. Next stand here and place a triangle so it attaches to the square. Before upgrading it, make sure that it's at 7%. Then build a double door frame. This will only be placeable if you remember to put down the twig single door frame below you. You may need to move around to get it to place. The door frame will increase the stability of the square and the triangle. But don't worry, the top bunker will still work. If you're going to go offline before we seal the shooting floor, when you come back online and open the bunker, I recommend resealing this one for now so you can't get camped. And until you've got a garage door, you'll have to remove and replace this double door here before you can reseal the bunker. Next, surround the second floor with walls. Put a double door here. Now we're going to seal in the roof. We make sure to attach the triangles to the outside walls like so. This will prevent the dreaded triangle splash work. If you want to know what this is, check out the video in the description. And make sure not to attach this triangle to this wall. Instead, attach it to this square which will increase the stability. Now add another wall here with a door frame here. This is where the battery will go. Remember to check out the end of the video if you want to see how to place all the deployables. Now we're going to build our pixel gap bunker. First place two boxes and remember to lock them. But don't use skinned boxes, otherwise you'll see them through the gap. 
Place this triangle attaching to the square you're standing on. The stability should be about 61%. And then place the other triangle attaching to this square. This will ensure that you have a pixel gap between the two triangles. But for it to work, this one can't be above 15% stability. To access the boxes, take out a gun and aim your sights down the gap. Now we're going to fill in this floor with wall frames. And then build a loop room in this square. Feel free to add as many doors on this floor as you like. Now we're going to go up to the roof and finish the shooting floor. Start by adding low walls all around the outside. Then in between the triangles on each corner, place a half wall, followed by two triangle frames. The half walls must be upgraded to metal to prevent being soft sided. Now in the centre, we're going to add three more half walls for honeycomb. Then a triangle on top. Now build three wall frames in the centre. If you're not having solar panels, you can build these afterwards. It'll actually be easier to finish the shooting floor. Then attach triangles, upgrading them to metal for the solar panels to sit on. These must be placed before the roof pieces. After that, place three square frames and place roofs on them. Now because of these wall frames are in the way, it's a little bit difficult to place these triangle roofs. So just try and do it from the position I'm standing in. Like I said, if you're not having solar panels, you can place the wall frames afterwards, but they are required if you're going to put a windmill on top of the base, which I don't recommend as it attracts raiders. And finally on the squares, we're going to place ramps. You might have some trouble placing these if you've got deployables on the floor below, so you'll have to remove those first. Next we'll add honeycomb to the base, but first we've got to upgrade this wall and foundation to the right of the front door. After that, add foundations all around the base. But don't upgrade this foundation yet, first we need to upgrade the foundation behind it. Now on this foundation we're going to build our new entrance. So place a wall and a door frame on top of the vending machine. Then place a door frame here, a furnace as a temporary jump up, then a full wall on top followed by a triangle ceiling. And make sure the triangle attaches to the outside wall. Now we can build the honeycomb on these foundations. This is very important. Make sure that all the triangle ceilings are attached to the outside wall, not the inside wall as I show here. If you attach these ceilings incorrectly, you could break the bunker. So when placing them, take note of the direction of the twig. At this point, the base will look like this. Now we're going to complete the entrance to prevent you from getting door camped. After adding the two foundations, place a door frame on this side, followed by a window on the right. Use a shop front if you don't have the window BP yet, but a window is better as you can use shutters to hide what's behind it. Build a temporary jump up to get up to the next floor. And extend the honeycomb on this triangle, again making sure to attach the ceiling correctly, and also remember to upgrade this floor before sealing it in. Now complete the entrance with two roof pieces, followed by another single door, and a wall above it. One of the reasons I haven't shown you how to place any of the vending machines yet is because this one is more important right now, as the base is pretty vulnerable without it. Before adding the second floor honeycomb, 
you to locate these triangles, which are next to these ramps. The ceiling of these triangles must be upgraded to armoured, as unfortunately they can be splashed. Blame face points for this, not me. This is part of the triangle splash bug which has been going on for years. When you've upgraded those three triangles, upgrade the ones in between to metal. When done, the tops of the honeycomb should look like this. Now you can add all the honeycomb around the second layer. Again, making sure to attach the ceilings correctly. Now the base will be much more secure and should look like this. Before adding the final layer of honeycomb, again we need to locate these sides of the base with the ramps. You must upgrade these sections to metal before adding any more honeycomb. and also upgrade these foundations all around the base. Now either side of the metal honeycomb, add a square foundation, followed by a roof pointing towards the metal, and then two walls. Repeat this again on the other three sides. Now we can add the oil refinery. If you're on console, start by placing a Pac-Man of triangles like so. Remove this one and try and place your refinery. If you can't, remove these two triangles first and try again, and then replace them afterwards. If you're on PC, you won't have to do this, and you can build the housing before you place the oil refinery. place the oil refinery on PC, simply go outside and place it. If you're having any trouble, you can try from inside with the door closed. Now on this side, we're gonna build the bedroom slash horse box. Place two foundations, and on one side put a window, and the other side a double door frame. Don't forget to use shutters to hide your horses or your bed. To place the bed, you have to go outside the base, close the door, place the foundation, open the door again, and then carefully place the bed. Unfortunately, you can't fit a locker here, but you can place a small box either side of the bed. Now to upgrade the base. Upgrade these four walls to HGRIM and the walls around the TC followed by all the ceilings. This ceiling can be upgraded from above in the battery compartment. Now upgrade the rest of the core to metal. Make sure to lock your TC before placing the vending machine, or it will be useless. We must also place this shelf before the vending machine. Place the vendi, open the door, and gently slide in the vending machine up to the TC. Make sure the back of the vending machine is facing you. Obviously you only get one go at this on a real server, so make sure you do it correctly. But don't worry, it's very easy to do. To prevent the vending machine from rotating, make sure to put something inside it. And then fingers crossed, test if it works. If you want to increase the ray cost even more, you can remove this door and replace it with an armoured one. But at the same time, you also have to upgrade the door frame and this foundation. Now I'll show you how to place all the deployables in the core. Start by placing the boxes on the shelf. We need to jump on the furnace to do the ones above. Now 
On the other side, we'll put our electric furnaces and some large boxes. Make sure the boxes are as close to the walls as possible. Now I highly recommend putting the workbench here. As you can't put a door in the loop room, this will increase the ray cost to it. To put four boxes on this square, first upgrade the door frames to metal. If you're having trouble, slow down the video and watch very carefully. This first box must be placed perfectly for all the other ones to follow suit. There we go, beautiful. Now on the left, we're gonna place two furnaces. And on the right, we can place a locker here, followed by one more furnace. You can fit one next to it, but then you won't be able to use the vending machine as loot space. Then place your bags, one will go on each side. And finally, spam the whole core with garage doors. For the second floor, upgrade all these parts to metal. In the shooting floor, the only parts that need to be upgraded are the ones in the center. Leave the rest of the shooting floor stone. The pixel gap bunker can be upgraded to armored or metal. It's up to you. Place the battery, do the same as the tool cupboard. Two dots away from the front and all the way over to the right. As the floor is already upgraded, you'll have to eyeball this. But don't worry, it's hard to mess it up. Put a door in front of the battery and then place your vending machine. The same way as we did before. And again, remember to put something in it so it stops rotating. Now check you can access the contacts through the vending machine. You may need to wiggle around to try and find them. Now I'll place the deployables on this floor. Start with the boxes in this loot room. And next to the loot room, we'll put our research table with a large box underneath. Next to that, we'll have a level two, which can fit two boxes underneath now. And to the right of that, we'll have our mixing table, and you can fit a small box underneath that. Next to our respawn point, we can put a locker and two beds here. And lastly, spam this whole second floor with garage doors. Next, we're gonna complete the entrance. Remember to upgrade this wall and put a flame trap under the jump up. Put a shotgun trap above the garage door. Place another shotgun trap here and remember to upgrade this wall. Next, go outside and upgrade all the walls shown. Most of the second floor doesn't need to be metal. It won't increase the raid cost. And lastly, the solar panels. You could place one on each triangle, but their direction depends on where you built your base on the map and how long your wipe is. See the video in the description for more details. And the base is done. So if you've made it this far, give yourself a pat on the back and let me know what you thought of it in the comments. See you in the next one. Cheers.